So um, I know we just wanted to kind of chat briefly yeah. about the market and educate our audience about the reality of the market, really. Yeah, I, I think that's our job is, you know, sometimes it's not what people want to hear, but you know, I think like you had said, it's it's a great market for sellers, which you could talk about a little bit. <clears throat> and with buyers, you know, we're we're in that position where there's multiple offers, you know, offer, you know, over the asking price. But again, it's also the the market, right? So you're in the corona market. So that could be specific to your market right now. Um, and so that's why you still have to like talk to us, right? And and, and kind of figure it out. But that's, we just wanted to take a minute and kind of present what's happening. So I think you should share the exciting news though for your seller because it's awesome, right? You got over asking price. Yeah. So we got um, over asking. We went into escrow in about four or five days, mm -hmm. uh, a little longer because I was negotiating offers, but we received 23 offers. That yeah. is not to scare anybody. That is just what's happening. <laughs> yeah. And for the good houses, when I say good, it's clean, it's turnkey, maybe it's not completely renovated and remodeled and updated to 2023 status, yeah. but it, it's clean and it's livable. Those houses are moving quickly. So um, my, you know, we're, we're in an escrow, the seller needs a little extra time. We were able to negotiate that in. So that might be something that buyers encounter as these sellers are putting their homes on the market that they need a little bit of extra time. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a great property. And so I'm really, really happy for my seller and excited for the buyers that ended up that we ended up accepting. So, yeah. And I think, you know, we talked about this because, you know, we have certain standards, you know, as a mortgage loan officer and he was a real estate agent and what we do for our clients. And I think it was so interesting when you said out of all of those offers that you received, you know, only one lender reached out to you. Um, and and at, that just shocked me because it's so important when you're working with your mortgage lender. Because sometimes I work with a buyer for one month, six months, a year, right? Having those expectations. And I need to make sure they're 100% ready that when they find that house, if they're up against 22 other families, that they are the, the cleanest offer, you know, that we've looked at all their documents. I run automated underwriting and darn skippy. When you tell me they're going to submit an offer, I have you copy me on that email to the agent. And then as a lender, I am calling. Yes. Um, you, you have to do that. Right. I mean, it just makes you feel more comfortable for your seller who you're representing. So as a listing agent, it, it, it represents the buyer. Basically the buyers can't pick up the phone and call the sellers. So the agent and the lender are your advocates as you, as a buyer, um, as a listing agent, when the lender picks up the phone and calls, it really just makes our job easier. Mm -hmm. So we're not hunting down this information, especially in a multiple offer situation as a buyer hearing this news. I think it is so, so crucial to trust your lender and agent team and ask them these questions, ask them and interview them. When I submit offers, what are you doing to make me stand apart from the crowd? How are you reaching out to the listing agent? Is it a phone call? Is it an email? Is it a video? I know um, Tracy and I are huge. Anytime I'm representing buyers, I'm sending videos to those listing agents and guess what? They remember me. So even if they have 20 offers that they're looking at, they always make comments that they remember I'm the one um, that sent them the video. We may not always get it yeah. because our offer might not be the best, but it's so important to be remembered and set yourself apart in that retrospect. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're you're not a buyer that may have 50 grand or $80,000 to offer over asking, right? That's one way, obviously, for an offer to stand out. Um, but it's having all your ducks in a row, right? It's having your real estate agent like Heather being able to have that conversation with the listing agent on your behalf. It's, you know, a, a mortgage lender like myself where you're going to know these are the expectations because if for whatever reason we do get your offer accepted, then we have to go. I mean, it's go time, right? You're you're wiring your deposit. We have contingency dates, which that we have to meet for the appraisal and for the loan approval. So I feel like if the lender can't even pick up the phone 
before they get the offer accepted, you're going to struggle a little bit during that process with communication, which it, to me is key. I mean, to, to have a smooth, it's, you know, you're buying a $900,000 house, a $700,000 house. You need to have proper communication with your team. It's so important. Absolutely. So I yeah. would love to, um, for buyers out there, if you are interested in getting in the market and you're just kind of feeling it out, who am I going to work with? What lender am I going to work with? You don't have to work with us, but you yeah. do have to interview and make sure that you feel comfortable and trust your team a hundred percent. And I'd love to offer you some questions to ask when you are asking and talking to these people. But on the flip side, Tracy and I would love to represent you. Obviously we're a good solid team um, and we would represent you to the fullest. Yeah. And a little side note, if you are a seller looking to explore the option of selling and move up, move down, move out of state, whatever it is. In Corona specifically, the market is heating up for sellers. So yeah. definitely give me a call. Let's start the process and just start having those conversations about what your home is worth, what you might um, expect in the coming months in the market, in the very localized Corona market. Yeah. Well, especially too, if you're, you know, if you're a seller and you're getting 23 offers on a home, that, I mean, you know, I, I talked to you when you had that and you, you're, you know, you don't know mortgages like I do, right? You have to have, like, you have to know the difference between VA financing and FHA or down payment assistance, what timelines to expect, right? So, so like what Heather was saying is like, you need, whether you're a seller or a buyer, you have to have that team in your corner that knows what to anticipate um, and really is going to work for you, you know, as hard as I know that we do. So I think that's, that's the good message to get out this week because it's, it's starting up again, like you said, right? It's like, we're, we're seeing the purchase, the purchase market, like the time, it, we're not even there yet. I mean, usually come like May, June, it, it gets heated up, but you're already seeing it. So yeah, I'm already seeing it here in Corona yeah. um, and I'm representing both sides, sellers and buyers right now. So um, I'm on both ends of it. If you have more very specific questions to your situation, please feel free to reach out and Tracy and I would be happy to discuss your situation and see how we can help you, whether it is now, this week, a couple months from now, uh, towards the end of the year, whatever it is, we are just here to be your real estate resources um, from this point forward. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad we uh, we got this message out there. So yes. let's, uh, let's, let's talk again next week for sure. Absolutely. And we will awesome. see you next time. Bye, Heather. Bye. Bye.